Hello everyone, good afternoon. And so starting tomorrow, uh, I won't be giving talks at four o'clock at this point. You're getting more focused on your practice. I hope that you start to um, well, rely more and more on your own experience. And of course we meet uh, every day to talk one-on-one -on -one if you do have any questions. I don't have a lot more to say. I'm giving you a lot of information and direction. And at this point, it's about refining your practice and going deeper. So I thought I'd leave you with a teaching from the Nguttara Nikaya, Book of Sixes. This just means the part of the Tipitaka that has lists of six things, but there's one list that's, I think, kind of appropriate at this point. It's called the Mahantata Sutta. Buddha says, Chahi Bhikkhuve Dhammi Samanagato Bhikkhu Mahantatam Natchira Seva Mahantatam Vipulatam Papunati Dhammi Uh, there are these six, these six things, endowed with these six things. Uh, Bhikkhu is someone who has become aware of the need to free themselves from the dangers of clinging. When endowed with these six qualities in no long time, They will attain to Mahantata. Mahanta. But it's just two words, Mahanta and Vipula. Mahanta means great. Mahantata, greatness. And Vipulata means depth or profundity. A reminder that what we're doing here is what you're all practicing is something quite special, quite noble, very deep and profound. This isn't a hobby, something that you do on the side, it actually effect, affects in a very positive way your very, the very essence of who you are, purifying your habits freeing you from some of your bad habits. There's so much stress and suffering along the way. This isn't just an ordinary thing. This is something that leads to greatness, leads to a real profound sense of familiarity and understanding and wisdom about the world. Of reality. So there are six qualities that you can take with you and keep in mind as you practice, as a support for your journey on the path. The first is Aloka Bahulu, having a lot of light, brightness. Brilliance. And by brilliance, the Buddha means wisdom. But use the use of uh, the imagery of light, being full of light, gives a sense of what, how the Buddha understood wisdom. Wisdom is clarity. It's brightness. It's like turning on a light in a dark room. So the wisdom that you need is not something I can give you or you can read in books. 
The wisdom that you need is the clarity of understanding the experience moment to moment. It relates directly to your experience of problems, difficulties, challenges, and whether they have power over you, whether you're dependent on outcomes, dependent on situations and circumstances, whether you're under the power of the changes of life. It's about the clarity you have in the present moment. It's very much the core of what we're uh, working towards in our cultivation of mindfulness. A big part of it is breaking up reality, you know, seeing impermanence, seeing that the experiences we thought stayed with us day to day, moment, hour to hour, are really just momentary. Seeing that experiences are unpredictable. Seeing how our expectations of stability lead to stress. When things change, we're unprepared, we're unaccepting of change. This understanding, the clarity of the impermanence of reality is uh, is free. It's a part of the depth and the greatness. Suffering, seeing the suffering involved with clinging, mostly because of impermanence. If reality was permanent, clinging to anything is pleasant, but it's not permanent. And non-self, you can't control it, you can't change this, you can't prevent things from coming or going, changing. Just seeing clearly these things, this is wisdom. This is the brilliance. You don't need to go looking for them. It's like opening your eyes, turning on the light. Aloka Bhavana. Number two, uh, Yoga Bhavana. Having a lot of yoga. Yoga is an interesting word. It, it, it's come to mean one thing in modern uh, speech, but yoga means something like commitment. It's, um, it's described by the commentaries as referring to effort. But efforts a bit, um, can be a bit misleading. The Buddha talked a lot about effort, right? Vidyena dukkama jeti. Through effort, we free ourselves from suffering. But commitment is an interesting word, and it describes the sort of effort that's important. In some ways, you don't have to push hard, or you just have to not give up. If you're stubborn enough to keep trying, patient enough to stick with challenges and difficulties, it changes something about your outlook, because you, we're not looking for results in the sense of, of, of fixing our problems, right? We're looking for a new perspective. We're trying to become a person who is patient, who is able to experience without reacting. So when we have pain, it's not about getting rid of the pain. Pain is a problem we have to fix all. Pain is an experience. If you understand it and see it clearly, then it's not a problem. And so the energy, the effort that you need is to not give up. You'll often find yourself giving up, feeling like uh, you fail. Sometimes you want to sit for an hour, you just can't do it. So effort, the best uh, sort of effort is the effort that doesn't give, that doesn't quit. I failed and then you try again. Sometimes failing is a very important part of succeeding because we can push and push and, and stress and when you give up, it helps you let go and you're able to try again with a fresh perspective. But when you give up or when you give in, when you 
you like the practice? It's, it's, you only fail if you give up. So the effort to be patient, patience and effort, really go hand in hand. Yoga means commitment. Number three, Veda Bahamu. You have to have a lot of Veda. Veda here means uh, feeling. You have to have a lot of feeling. And here the, the meaning is uh, feeling for it. You have to feel, feel like doing it, we would say in English. Do it with feeling, once again with feeling. You know? Um, you have to put your heart into it. Quite many, many times in our practice, it's going. To, this is going to be a challenge. We can find ourselves discouraged. You probably found, especially in the at-home course, when you're practicing in daily life. You can start to, in the beginning, resent the practice, dislike having to do it, do so much walking and sitting. When you come here, it can be the same. You have pain, and so the hours that you have to do start to drag on at times. This is a reminder of the, um, the, the issue uh, in, those, in those realities that they're standing between us and the practice, because in order to succeed, you really have to get into it. You have to have chanda. You have to, in a sense, want to do it. It's not exactly wanting or craving, but you have to feel it. You have to feel like doing it. And so the best advice I can give you is, of course, not to force yourself, pretend that you want to do it, but to address those things that are standing in your way, the dislike, the boredom, because they are not default, they are not caused by the experience. Experiences aren't boring. Experiences aren't challenging. We react, our reactions are the, the reality. You get become bored, and the boredom is all that's standing in the way between you and peace, you and contentment. A person sitting up on the mountain peacefully meditating in, on, a, on a mountainside can either be content or bored. And the only thing that's standing between them and the peace of, of the tranquility of, of being up on a mountain all alone is the boredom and the craving for something else. If they give those things up, if they take those things away, what you're left with is peace. So a reminder that if you're not into it, you have to be conscious of those hindrances that are standing in your way, that are preventing you from being okay with what you're doing. Especially when what you're doing is something so great, so helpful, so beneficial, as I think you all have seen through your practice. So that's uh, number three. Number four, asantuti bahono. And this is an interesting one. The Buddha says you have to have a lot of discontent, which I've been talking a lot about contentment. And it's an important teaching. There are two kinds of contentment. Uh, there's contentment with uh, your experiences, in the sense of not, not being uh, averse to what you experience. Experiencing contentment, uh, regardless of what you get, what you don't get. I mean, obvious an example is contentment with food, contentment with lodgings, contentment with clothing, and contentment with medicines, or the things that we all have to use, our requisites. Uh, contentment with the practice, rather than being discontent, as I said, but being full of discontent here is, an, is the other kind of discontent in the sense of not being content with your uh, wholesome qualities. Never being content with how far you've come on the, on the path. A sign of greatness is someone who seeks to better themselves, even when they're an okay person. 
A sign of greatness is to focus not on your successes, but focus on, on what is yet to be done. To never, to never be content. The Buddha once admonished a group of anagamis who were content. They were thinking, oh, we've done a lot now. We've become anagami, which is a very high level of enlightenment. The Buddha said, you are not done yet. Don't be content. Don't be complacent. So it's a good reminder to us, asantuti, don't focus on your accomplishments. You can think of them as like a raft. And when you have a raft, you use it to cross a river or a lake or whatever. But when you get to the other side, you don't pick it up and carry it with you. You put it down and you, you, you continue on your way. What you gained in the practice is like a raft. It was great. It, it helped you get to where you are now. But don't carry it around with you. It just becomes a burden because it distracts you. And it makes you complacent. It slows you down. Uh, number five, Anikita Duro. Anikita Duro relates to uh, commitment. Anikita means not giving up, not putting down. But here it's, it's much more, I think, in the sense of um, continuous practice, right? One of the fundamentals of mindfulness practice, if you read in the booklet, is uh, continua continuation, uh, sorry, continuity, so that you're practicing constantly. It means don't put it down. Anikita, nikita means where you, you put it down, you take a break. It's a great thing about this, this sort of technique and the, the teachings in the Satipatthana Sutta is the Buddha said, when you're drinking, you can practice. When you're eating, you can practice. When you're urinating and defecating, you can practice. And everything you do, when you're speaking, you can even be mindful of your lips moving, and hearing the sound of your own voice and feeling your voice box rattle. Though I do encourage you to not talk very much. Again, as we said, only if necessary. Try and be mindful throughout your day. Don't put it down even for a moment. It doesn't mean you have to be walking and sitting for as many hours as you can. When you take breaks, just be mindful when you're drinking, when you're eating, when you're walking, when you're sitting, even when you're lying down at night. Try to do lying meditation. I think it I don't have to admonish all of you, and I can see many of you, and all of you are you're engaged in this. And this is, should be a great encouragement to you that you're fulfilling this uh, important aspect of practice that really does help to lead to success. Anikita Duro. Don't put it down even for a moment. And number six, uh, Kusalesu dhammesu uttaricha pātāiti Make effort to reach higher and higher kusala. Uh, to always be going to the, the, the next step. Don't, this is, I guess, related to contentment. It means uh, going stage by stage going from, from one wholesomeness to the next. So it relates to the others, really, not being content. Uh, working to attain higher and higher levels of wholesomeness. So uh, in a sense, uh, trying to refine your practice. So not being content again with with accomplishments in regards to problems you might have so when you come to be when you first come to practice you see your course defilements you'll see some major issues you might have or greed anger delusion as you practice the idea here is to go further uh, this often takes uh, the, the form of trying to engage in new practices. So an example for a monk would be um, deciding to practice under a tree, like, like sleep under a tree, 
and no longer sleep in a kuti or to decide to only eat one meal. There's many, many practices. Some monks will decide to not, never lie down ever, day or night, these kind of things. So making, thinking to yourself, what can I do more? What more can I do? And, and striving to attain higher and higher refinement in your practice. Again, it relates to the others about um, working or going further. But this involves the, the, the idea of practicing new things, which is a part of why we give you new exercises every day. It's like if you're doing weightlifting, weightlifting training, you every day or every week, you write down how much weight you lifted this week and you add another 10 pounds. Every day I give you two more touching points. And this is uh, in the interest of helping you to gain greater and greater wisdom. So these are the six Mahantata Dhammas. They lead to greatness and they lead to profundity. Recommended by the Buddha himself, a sort of a last group parting gift to you, to remind you of the sorts of things to focus on from here on in. And we'll still meet again tomorrow at the same time, one, starting at 1 p.m. So that's the Dhamma for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.